We are on a mission, a mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Podcast, we dive into current events that are shaping how pharmacists approach their patients and their businesses. Fuel your passion for pharmacy one conversation at a time. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition. All right, so this is our what is this? Our really our first Catalyst podcast, second, uh, second, second. We had a I beta, guess, technically. This is yeah. alpha, a beta. This is this is pre production. <laughs> so we got fifteen. We get to call it. We got fifteen before we really get going when people would listen before to us for good. three hours. Yeah. So yeah. maybe it's probably true. But uh, so uh, I'm gonna need at least that <laughs> today. I, I'm Jeff Key. Y'all don't know, and I've got. Uh, Several people from last time. So Mark's here, Josh is here, and uh, joining us is Gina, who's uh, one of our, could you even say one of our account managers? She's like from Shreveport. Zero, that's like, right? That's like the account manager from Shreveport. The, the reason we do account managers the way we do in Shreveport. So kind of crazy. Yeah. So uh, crazy. how long, pretend that I actually know this exact number, right? But I'm just doing this for the crowd. So so tell me how many, Marcia, every time I talk about how long we've been doing Pioneer, I always do it too short. So it's always longer. So how, how long have you been with Pioneer RX? Uh, so I have been with Pioneer RX for 12 years. And so how did you uh, tell everybody how you got here? Um, so I worked in a pharmacy prior to joining the Pioneer Rx team that, um, we use Prism and, um, the, they were independently owned pharmacy and they were, it was a sinking ship. I needed to find another job. Um, and so I'd started looking for a job and one of the jobs that I came across was a job posting, um, looking for Prism support which was through Morrison Dixon, all of that at that time. Um, and it was just a, a skill list of all of these skills related to hardware that I did not have. But um, I saw myself uh, being an asset or able to fit into that role because I had experience with prison and because I was pharmacy tech. I had been doing that for eight years. Um, and so actually, funny story is whenever I applied you guys called and, you know, set up the interview and um, I let my husband know, you know, then he was my boyfriend uh, that I had an interview coming up and we knew someone that worked with uh, Prism at the time. And so he reached out to her and she let him know that, you know, oh, yeah, she'll be interviewing with Jeff Key. Well, my husband went to the same university that Jeff taught at. And so he was like, oh, no, he's going to ask you all these technical <laughs> questions and he's going to fire you just before you even get hired. I love that. <laughs> and so <laughs> I called back and I talked to Marsha um, and I was like, look, I, I really don't think I'm, I'm a good fit for this job. I, I just don't. I think you guys are going to be wasting your time. And Marsha uh, said, no, no, you're the pharmacy tech, right, that applied. No, we really want to talk to you. And so um, had I not had that conversation and not been the polite Gina that I was then and actually called to cancel <laughs> an interview. <laughs> Just did not show up. I, you know, th things could have been different. I may not have shown up for the interview and I wouldn't have this job. And I'm glad I do. I love it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm saying I'm glad you did is probably an understatement. So, you know, uh, for those out there who don't know, Gina was the reason that we only use now pharmacy techs for our, uh, the, the software support. And so, you know, one of the things we figured out is, oh my goodness, we don't have to teach her the pharmacy business as we had done with the, the previous product they had called Prism. We said teach her our software and, uh, it really worked out. And, and not just that, um, Gina was, you know, exceptional with the customers and, and everything like that. And so we said, Hey, this is great. And we did it and we did it and we did it. I don't know what 80 or 90, 90 times. Yeah where we are. So what, what would you say is the biggest change that you've seen over the 12 years? Um, as far as just the industry or just, well, it's all right, which is whatever, what have you yeah, seen? What so, are your, what are your big changes you've seen in the last 12 years? So the biggest change that I would say is just the shift in, because, you know, from whenever I was actually working in a pharmacy, you know, we were just filling bill, putting pills in a bottle, handing it to the patients. And now just that whole shift where pharmacies are you know, that healthcare provider that's most accessible to communities and, and seeing how 
pharmacies are changing their practices and what they're doing and how they're being more involved in that, which I think is, is awesome. It's great. So you see, how many accounts do you have now? Um, so I only have a, a, a handful of accounts now, so about 10. Um, so most of them are still those uh, pharmacies that I had in North Carolina. Um, so, uh, but you know, I talk to a lot of pharmacies. And so even though I'm not talking to pharmacies like me on the phone, you know, the people that are, um, I'm helping out, you know, I'm giving them answers and I'm kind of talking to them by proxy, I guess, if you will. <laughs> right. How many, um, how many people do you have working for you? So I have 10 in my group, 10 account managers. And how long, uh, most of them you've had for a while or you have some new people or what have they been doing um, with you? So I do have a couple of new people. Um, so uh, two are actually there in Irving. Well, three are in Irving. Um, I would say that the majority of those in my group, I've probably had underneath me for at least three, four years average. Are you hearing different stuff from your customers when they're talking to you about what's going on? And yeah, what kind of what kind of new like things you're seeing kind of pop up to you guys now? Well, so definitely one of the things that you know we're seeing more and more of is pharmacies are reaching out because they're looking for a way to um, give employees that are unable to to report to the physical uh, brick and mortar pharmacy. They're, they're looking for access, remote access, VPN, so that those people can do some of those things that you don't have to have someone in the pharmacy doing um, to help them through if, you know, they've been exposed or with kids that, you know, the whole scheduling with school, how that's going to work out. So we're seeing more of that, um, which is interesting. And, you know, it's awesome. What kind of things are they asking to be able to do remotely? Uh, so they'll do um, like claim rejections, work in the rejection queue, um, work in RX edits. Um, if you've got a technician that has to stay home for whatever reason, and that's your main MedSync person, uh, they could call, make those MedSync calls, send out those messages. Um, so there's there's really a number of things that you don't have to have someone in the pharmacy doing. Someone could do remotely. That's interesting. I, I it makes total sense that MedSync could be done yeah. not in the store. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I mean, I guess you just have to figure out the phone, but. I mean, some of our bigger stores that do a lot of MedSync anyway, they really treat their MedSync callers as a call center. There's yeah. no reason they have to be in the brick and mortar. That's true. They're usually also like in a different part of the pharmacy. Right. Yeah. They're in the anyway. back or in a room or doing yeah. something else. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things that's really interesting is um, obviously with, you know, the not being able to go into businesses, we're kind of coming out of that, but you still have people that aren't coming out of that and actually venturing out into going into a store. So they, they're wanting curbside or they want drive through. So figuring out how to keep the front end business that they're using to supplement, you know, the pharmacy, keep people interested. Um, so one of one of my stores, actually, they had just started a boutique with clothing right before COVID had hit. And so, you know, without having that foot traffic, people were not seeing those things. And so she really has leveraged social media. So she's gone from having an employee that does social media for them part-time to hiring someone full-time, um, advertising, doing Facebook Live, thing like that, things like that. And it's really made a difference for them. So, so what about you? How's your family? We're all doing good. Um, so my daughter, you know, she works in a doctor's office. She's had a couple of scares where she was exposed and um, she actually missed like a whole week of work just waiting on test results for COVID because there was just a huge delay in getting those results back. Um, but it was negative both times that she had a scare. So, um, but Derek and I have both been great. We haven't had any kind of instances where we've had that kind of scare. So just trying to find things to do that, you know, outside of the norm, what we're used to, but this is our new normal. <laughs> yeah. Does it feel pretty safe in, in Shreveport? Are most people wearing masks and. Yeah, I think so. Um, most people are wearing masks. Um, you do see a couple here or there that don't. Um, I don't, f I feel safe. I mean, I don't feel like, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't have that same fear, like maybe there earlier in the beginning. Um, it was like a lot of unknown. Yeah. It's just funny how a lot of people who are, who are really, really scared early on 
Now you're going around going, okay, y'all back up. You yeah, know, they're kind y'all of let, don't get close. Kind of letting their hair Put down your mask now. on. You know, it's uh, and that's the human experience. You know, you can only be, you know, you imagine the people in, in Britain during World War II who are getting bombed on every day, you know, and at first you're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to die and probably, you know, not leaving out from under a table for days. And then sooner or later you realize I got to, I'm just going to go on with my life. You know, I've got to, I got to have life. I'm going to try to be safe. And, but, um, yeah, it was even crazier. There were stories in World War II where they would, you know, at first people would bomb and they would evacuate and go crazy. Toward the end, they would start bombing and people would go sit on the hill and watch. Wow. You know, it's just like, it's a, it's a totally different, you're like, well, it's going to happen. I might as well see what's going on. You see what we're doing there? We're trying to get into some of that hardcore history. <laughs> yeah, no, he's right? kind of, he's <laughs> so, kind of yeah. sliding that so back in. So we can in, get our, we our three he? hours in, you know, to talk uh, a little bit about I mean, World War It's II. one of those things you, you listen to a lot of stuff and you start picking up those little nuggets and you're like, all right. What is, what is the most, you know, in, in, in your memory, and I imagine there've been a bunch of those, but, but what stands out in your mind at time that you go, man, I love my job, right? This just really, you know, your heart swelled three sizes. And what, what was the time when you felt like that? Um, I think that there's that happens time and time again for me. Um, and and I'll tell you why. It's because, you know, the I, I'm fortunate to where I work with a group of customers that are they're very innovative. They're very passionate about what they do in their community. And um, I'll just use like Bayboro Pharmacy, for example. Um, you know, I love her. The, yeah. Lori and Jonathan yeah. Altman yeah. are awesome. And every single time you talk to them, you know, they may start out the conversation with a problem and we may not have exactly what it is that they need, but they are always open to, you know, bouncing around ideas, figuring out how to do it. And they are always gung ho in figuring out what to do and how to do things that's going to help their community. Um, and, you know, one of the things with her that I really recall just kind of standing out to me is that just the passion in her speaking about she was um, and I'm sure she does still provide these late uh, weight loss training um, classes. She um, figured out how to bill for those uh, to major medical uh, for patients, um, diabetes training, um, smoking cessation. And so like she was just really spearheading, you know, figuring out how to do that. And it was the first that I'd heard of a pharmacy doing that. And you know, even though she would come back and say, well, you know, they denied the claim this time, she was still just like gung ho and moving forward and going on with it. So I, I think we hear about that all the time with independent pharmacies. And I think it's really a great group um, of, of people that have a lot of heart in what they do. And it makes my job. And I think I could speak for all of us. It makes all of our jobs worthwhile. Yeah, it's such a great group of people in general. You're, you're kind of starting to, we're in that season too with COVID. And then you've got, we had some people with affected by tornadoes before. Um, we had an installation just like a few weeks ago that got struck by lightning the next week. You know, like the worst time to have things fail. Um, we had someone out there and, and helped them out and stuff. But um, that's kind of what you're what you're talking about there too is you we in those natural disasters and covid mm -hmm. and stuff it's god they step up and we, you know, we're trying to help them prop them up too but right it's easy to focus on all the bad things but you get the best of humanity as well in those types of situations yeah for sure, for what, sure. what's going to happen with the flu shots you think people are really going to rise up and I, everybody get a flu shot i this think year? there's a run on them yeah yeah i think it's gonna be crazy like i've i've seen i have a couple of friends that still work um, kind of your big box retail and they're tripling all of their, um, flu goals. So wow. The, wow. The tripling, the, huh? tripling. Wow. That's... Um, and so when you start seeing that, like you're going to have this mass group of people who were on the fence about, eh, I get the flu, no big deal. Now you have to worry about, is it the flu? Is it COVID? Is it something else? Um, it's just one thing you can check off and take away. Like I think flu vaccines this year are just going to be massive have you seen that gina you're your group yeah. you, you've seen a, an yeah. interest in getting vaccine vaccination program going and haven't had it before absolutely um so you know one of the things that we're seeing now is you know it's like we've we've weathered the the big storm and now we're looking to the future what do we need to do to start planning for flu shots what do we need to do to start planning for being able to administer the point of care testing um that 
we all want to, to be a part of. Um, and I think one of the challenges there is, you know, how do you juggle bringing in patients for testing that potentially have the flu or strep or, you know, those contagious things, and then also provide those vaccinations to prevent some of those things. And so you're really looking at um, they're, they're going to have to have some type of scheduling appointment setting for some of those things. And I think that's, that's something that a lot of pharmacies are reaching out and thinking about right now. Yeah. You know, I didn't think about that. You know, one of the things we've been pushing is point of care testing on the strep and the flu and having somebody come in with strep or the flu and testing them there in the pharmacy is a whole different thing than having somebody who come in and maybe strep or flu or COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to test them there in the flu. You know, you know, you see these big lines, you know, one thing's interesting, you know, I, I knew somebody who, who went to get tested and one of the things that they started looking at the places to get tested, most of the testing now is self-testing, right? Somebody watches you like with the big chains and they have those lines outside their pharmacy to do testing. It's self-testing. They watch you to make sure you do it right, but they're not doing it. They're giving you the equipment and having you do it yourself. And not sure I could stick something in my so nose. They're and just kind of walking. Brain. They're just kind of walking you through it. Yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah. I mean, it partially explains a lot of the false negatives that Good. we've seen. Also true. Um, yeah, because the in order to get a good swab, you have to go all the way back. Like, it's you uncomfortable. Spin it and. Yeah. yeah, you have to go both directions. It's not comfortable. Yeah, you got to commit. You know? Yeah, like, uh, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's like you almost need the person who's crazy enough to like bite themselves and draw blood yeah. to be able to jam a, a wooden toothpick in your nose. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, like, I don't. If, I, if both of your eyes are not watering and you're not doing it right, see, that's a good enough reason to social distance and not be in a position where you think you need to do that. <laughs> no like, doubt. like if I get sick, I need to know I don't have it because I just don't. I I know I get. I mean, the other ones, the flu is kind of like that. I'm like, okay. Yeah, but there's enough. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and people are they've gotten complacent enough with the flu where they should go back that deep, but they don't, man. Because you're going, right. yeah, you, somebody's grabbing your hand. You're crying, going, what you're are you crying, doing? uncle? Yeah, you're, you're crying, doing uncle. This. <laughs> but the the scheduling is interesting. So have you have you had people asking how they can yeah. schedule with Pioneer? Yeah. Yeah, so we've we've had um, a few stores reach out looking for a way to set up the the scheduling in Pioneer RX, um, and we do have you know you could set up a, a care goal um, with a care action with a due date, but the problem is that you don't have that block view where you could see okay these are the dates and the times that I have available, um, and so you know one of the things that you know you could we can point them to as, you know, Outlook um, or another calendar app, but, um, you know, task, you could create tasks, but still there's not that calendar view. And maybe that's a, you know, there are a lot of controls for that. So maybe an easy thing we can do is, is first start off and wrap a calendar view yeah, around. Do like a Calendly type of. Yeah. We'll just wrap the calendar view around those action items, or those task items, just so you can oh, see. Right. That's true. Kind of like yeah. the calendar view that we do for the uh, med sync. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yep. It's just a control. Mm -hmm. Just wrap that control. That might be something we could do pretty rapidly. So, yeah, I think it is that would certainly help them out there is certainly a design for scheduling. Um, it's just getting enough people doing that, and I think this is you know a lot of things are going to change with the whole hold COVID. Yeah, it's constantly changing. And another thing that they're reaching out for is um, you know they're they're getting a lot of uh, push for screening their employees as well. So, you know, as soon as someone reports to work, here's three questions you need to ask them just to make sure, you know, they're not infectious or potentially have COVID. Um, and so, you know, task, you know, creating tasks and stuff like that can be useful for um, reminding employees to answer those questions. So there's a, there's a few ways to do it, but, you know, it's just constantly and always changing things that they're needing to do. It's one of those weird <laughs> scenarios where um, an independent pharmacy you would build Pioneer to do something and 4,000 people use it in a way that you never even dreamt that would would be a possibility. And then the next thing you know, that, that random wasn't planning on that situation becomes the norm. Like, mm -hmm. what are we going to see people using tasks for next year? Well, and that's when you know that you know, and that's a goal. You know, a lot of times when we're thinking about things we're doing, we're thinking about, you know, use a kind of a negative way of looking at it and saying, how do we get punished for it? But how are people going to try to use this in ways that we haven't thought of before and trying to make sure that, that, um, you know, we support that and we know how things are going to change and how they're going to get better. We were talking about the getting, getting people ready 
That's something I was thinking about the morning. How are we feeling about temperature checks these days? Anybody have an opinion? I know one thing we're doing in Shreveport, doing here, we're checking everybody's temperature yeah, we when that, we come in. We do that internally already. Um, yeah. Most of the people that we've known have gotten COVID didn't have temperature. I had very right. little. That's true. Yeah, I would say, I don't know, half and half maybe. Kind of uh, half and half? Yeah, half and half, at least on our side, yeah. Yeah, it, at least eventually half got Some. COVID, but it wasn't the first couple of days. Yeah, that's true. And, right. you know, out of all the temperature checks we've done so far, at least in Dallas, we've had none pop. Right. Yeah, and I don't think none of anybody walking by it. So, yeah, yeah I'm not sure. There'd be a lot of those things that I think we're doing, you know, the super cleaning the surfaces, you know, and they keep coming back and saying, you know, we have a girl over here that comes around and cleans all the handles, you know, and so far they're saying it's really not happening that way, you know, so it'd be interesting to see how some of those things transform um, over the next time and just how, you know, getting employees prepped to come in. It may be more like that, more just a questionnaire. Hey, you know, yeah. It's and really things about they don't think about, you know, how are you tasting? It may be as yeah. just as interesting, you know, one of the <laughs> main ones is, this? I've heard yeah, smell. Sorry, smell, yeah. sorry, smell. I've heard I, smell, I mean, being, smell being what you know, it is. We may have a, a deal that says, you know, you pick up a deal and smell Can it. Can you smell and, this? And, and Scratch it, and, and you, sniff. And, and yeah. you and you and you I say, like what is this? Right. Yeah. Right. You know, you open up a little jar and you have to write, you have to record what it is and <laughs> you get it wrong. And right, because I, I tell you, you know, one of the primary ones today is the loss of smell. Right. Um, and especially of the ones that are more asymptomatic, you know, that, that don't get much else. They just lose their their sense of smell. It's funny. My um, my wife's sister lives in Eagle, Colorado, and very early on. um she lost her smell and, and, and her husband, who was a doctor told her, Oh, it's just your, your, uh, sinuses. It's just seasonal deal. And she just went on without it. And, it, it, and um, so then, uh, several months later, she went and got a antibody test and it was positive, you know, so she oh, had wow. had COVID and, uh, we just didn't know. And there are a lot of people who don't know. And a lot of people who yeah. think that the smell loss is just a little loss. It's like, Total loss. You know, you hear people say, I, I smelled hand sanitizer and all it did was burn my nose. You know, I, I couldn't smell anything at all. Can give everybody a little banana scratch and sniff on yeah, the way yeah, in. Yeah, just and say, and, and <laughs> tell them what, what, yeah. is it, what does it smell what like? What does it smell like? Name this smell. Right. See, we should have a business. It'd be, it'd be you know, you, Name instead this of smell. These, <laughs> these, these temperature check stations, you, you hit a button. I, I remember somebody that was a, um, there was a product that never made it, which I was actually interested in. And it, this whole 4D gaming experience, it was a device that was that you loaded with different cartridges and it was supposed to, at certain times of the game, give out certain smells. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, called a Sensi something or yeah. another, but. Well, it's like um, Disneyland has something like that where you go and you sit and like it'll blow air on you and like scent. Yeah. It's 4D. Mm -hmm. The bugs, it's bugs. Oh, is right. it bugs? Okay. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You, it was the bugs, yeah. Because they did it with Shrek. Yeah, nobody'd stay in there. You know, <laughs> everybody's out. <laughs> we're like, it'd be like horrible. But okay, so back to the maybe we go find the patents and revive that machine. And what it does is it produces a scent, and you have to you choose from a little, um, you know, uh, four uh, multiple choice what the scent was. And if, scent you, phone and, if you, and if you get it wrong, then it it goes. You know. You could make it really fun, you know, like the Harry Potter, like every flavor beans. You could just every flavor smell, every like just flavor get a random, smell. and you're yeah, like, yeah. "What is this?" And you're like, "Next, next." next. <laughs> I smell it. Thank you. I smell it. Thank you. Bye. That was horrible. <laughs> but you right. could just you could use that with combination with facial recognition, right? And if it smelled bad and they and they didn't winch, you know, then you <laughs> you, you know there's a problem. <clears throat> Nice. We're, we're developing new businesses ideas right here. Who, who needs an infrared like camera? It. You just have to smell stuff. You just have to smell stuff. We don't need, that's a lot less invasive, right? Just, just smell. Matter of fact, that's perfect. See, you could just now, you could get a whole audience, right? Rather than scanning the whole deal, you just kind of pipe in nauseous fumes, right? And if, and if the people don't cover their nose, then you know they got COVID. Right. Well, right? Well, we just figured out testing and uh, like screening all in one. Yeah, step. we got testing and screening right there. We'll, we'll all know Jeff did this in a few weeks. Weeks if we, uh, <laughs> yeah. we start be, smelling things is, at I'm our desk. I'm telling you, compared to all these people doing temperature checks, it'd be much better. I think instead generally, of somebody walking up to your forehead and pushing a button, just kind of walk up and squeeze a can, right? You know, I'm going to say, the, the generally can, speaking, farts, people you, know, you just you just squeeze the can, and if and if they don't react, they got the COVID, right? right? So you're you, like, 
maybe not a great them. idea to run up and spray a <laughs> noxious gas in somebody's <laughs> face these days. Can. I, I don't know how far away you'd have to get it, you know, but it would be. I, I think we're onto something here, guys. Maybe. Get excited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is foolproof. This, this is a sure thing. <laughs> Anybody? Okay, who's got the next idea? <laughs> right. Your idea is better. Let me hear it. <laughs> yeah, I can just see you going through like a, like a, like a senses, like triage. You know, you're like, okay, you smelled something. Now you have to taste this thing, and then <laughs> you keep moving on. Oh, That'd did you terrible. know what you're getting yourself into Sorry, today, Gina? Gina? Sorry. No, so this is great. I'm really enjoying this. So, Thank anybody tried to travel? Um, I think um, yeah. a couple of us went to Colorado. Yep. Uh, last week came back, Kading, Texas. Oh, don't tell Texas, but don't tell Texas. the weather was amazing. It was, you, we came back to hot. We do love Texas, but, um, fortunately it was a place we can go. Colorado is kind of one of those safer cities. If we're looking at, you know, one of the challenges Mark's been running to is kind of a, a whack-a-mole in that you can't go to this state from this state. You can't go to this state from that state. I was talking about it the other day and found out they are, um, they're actually planning where they go. So we're going to send the installers of this state first because, they can get to wow. this state from that state and then we'll move them from that state to just yeah. like we have a New York one coming up and man, the, the, the team that helps me is so smart, but they basically are, we're going to have to keep a guy out um, and make him and, and have him go to installations in states that are not on the bad list in New York and just keep him out and then let him come back until he gets to that installation on the third week in New York and, and he can, Get, and that's just kind of the things you got to be resourceful to, to get there. And those people need help. You know, you can't do a conversion completely remotely if you've never even used Pioneer before. So, yeah, people ask, how's it going? I'm like, hey, we're selling. You know, you wouldn't think yeah. there was a COVID how we're selling it. But uh, it's continued. It's amazing uh, what they've done in, in the installation group and just just figuring out how to get there. Right. And not have to quarantine for 14 days. Um, yeah, we I guess I tour. didn't realize that was still happening with states. That's yeah. I didn't realize. Oh yeah, no, it's getting a lot worse. Yeah. And they're doing theirs based on a lot of them doing it on percentages. Go ahead. Tom. Yeah, no, they're just doing it on percentages of uh, population where if you have hotbeds and they're they're tracking hotbeds. So like I saw the CDC was saying that, you know, at Kentucky, um Ohio is a big one. Ohio right now too, and it? Tennessee were three potential places. So as those bubble up, other states around them kind of restrict travel. Mm. Yeah, when we came out initially, it was, uh, Kansas was really mm -hmm. strict, really, really strict. And we had a, we had a good amount of, uh, conversions in Kansas and we had to basically, sorry, Josh and Adam, I'm going to get this wrong probably, but, uh, we, we stationed like four guys in Kansas for six weeks, I think. And then you get them t-shirts. Yeah. We, I think we did a tour de Kansas. Tour um, de Kansas. Uh, t-shirt. Um, they, they, they stepped up though. Those guys did. Um, for sure. And just live there for six weeks and, and getting everybody in that we had to get in and getting them trained and, and, and came back home. Well, it's going to get better. Uh, one of the things, uh, I don't know how everybody feels about masks. I'm sure there's a lot of opinions out there, but they seem to be working in Texas. So, you know, you look a couple of weeks ago, we were running, Dallas County was running over a thousand a day for seven consecutive days. And they're running close to half of that now. And the compliance has been, been pretty good. Now you, you get other places in Texas, uh, Actually, my daughter and I drove to Colorado and you hit some of the other cities on the way to there and the max mask compliance is negligible, maybe. Yeah, I was probably side the 35, 20, sorry, the 35 corridor. Yeah, the, the population densities yeah. outside of that, it gets a little Spartan. Yeah, I, 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 that was one of the things like very early on, I didn't understand, you know, it's like, why, why not just have everybody wear a mask? Let's just wear a mask. What can it hurt? So it's interesting to see now that that's showing to, to work. And now I'm interested to see how many people are going to adopt the, the full face. The full fa I've <laughs> seen them. I've seen them in yeah. some of the like grocery stores, but maybe it's usually, I think I see them one or the other, maybe not both, but huh. I, I'm not sure. Um, but I've, I've seen them before. Yeah, you know, one noticed. of the things I've seen more of recently is the people wearing the disposable non N95 mask, but with the fabric over the top. And that was one of the things they they said early on was, you know, if you're going to make a homemade mask, two layers work. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, it's a good time to be a mask maker. Everybody's making masks yeah. now. <laughs> well, and you're finally getting a good supply and you're getting comfortable mask and, and um, you know, are, are, sorry, a lot more comfortable. I guess you may or may not think they're comfortable. There's plenty of disposable ones out there. And a lot of times I prefer just the disposable um, one because, you know, you get it, you throw it away. 
it seems to be a little bit easier to breathe yeah. in. And, and I mean, a lot of companies have been playing with different fabrics and, you know, I went through pharmacy school and training and the whole last year you wear a mask all the time. After you wear one for a couple of hours, several days a week, you get used to it. So you like, it's just it. one of those things where I don't know that the masks are more comfortable any more than we're just used to wearing masks now. Yeah. Right. Um, some definitely more so. Like sure. the early on, those thrown together masks over the weekend, not great. Yeah, made out of corduroy yeah. or something. And you, <laughs> Whatever and you've got in your closet. You, you breathe in and they freeze to your face. Yeah. And you're like, you know, our, you know I, I, I saw an ad for one in um, in denim. I'm like, this does not sound denim? like that's going to work well. Oh, yeah, that sounds rough. I'm like, oh, but it was a denim that is color. Rough. Yeah. And not to shamelessly plug Adidas, but I bought a couple from there and they have like the dry fit fabric in the inside. Okay. They're great. Huh. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. I think it was like 16 bucks for three or so. Um, it did take like five weeks to get them, but yeah. they're they're really comfortable. Yeah, I got some from Hanes. Yeah, and, I saw Hanes. And the, the underwear people nice. are making, uh, making uh, face masks, but they're really comfortable. They're stretchy. Um, I did get the black because I thought the white was weird. Oh, that was a very <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I just the underwear that's mask. A, that's a little strange. Did, but, do uh, they have a they have an elastic band with little, hands on it? But, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I do the admit front. they're comfortable. So uh, yeah, so everybody's getting into it, and that's probably going to continue. And you're going to have we're going to have fashion, and you know what what kind of things are you seeing there? And and you starting to see people match their outfits there in Shreveport with? Oh the, yeah, for sure. I, I like. Some, one of the girls that works here, actually, um, she had a, a Louis Vuitton printed one. <laughs> nice. All right. Nice. Yeah. So definitely starting to see. And I think now, like, because we are seeing so many, like, it's just readily available. You know, you can get any color for your outfit. But here I am. I just wear the same three every, I just cycle them out. <laughs> and they're going to be like, that's so-and-so. She's she's so pretentious. She's got a closet full of masks, right? <laughs> right. That's the status. Like a sub, a, like a low key a, it's status it's indicator status now. Symbol, right. You're yeah. They're, they have a different one hanging on each shoe. Yeah. Get your bedazzled masks. Right. Yeah. Bedazzled. The, there you go. The, the weirdest ones I've seen is um, I was at uh, Central Market yesterday and someone had like a, it's almost like see through around their mouth. Yeah. And I was oh, like, yeah. God, yeah. And I could like, I could see their lips, stop, which is probably easier to understand someone talking, but it was just, just. Yeah. It looks weird, weird like, and jarring. It's like a, yeah. a black you kind of outline. You don't realize how much you rely on lip reading to, to communicate For until sure. you can't see someone's lips. Like I find myself like, I can't understand what you're saying because I can't see your lips. I know. And, so and I, I feel rude because. I'm not looking at you, but I'm pointing my ear towards you, right? Like, I probably just did that in the mic. But, yeah, like, I'm pointing my ear towards you instead of my mouth, like, instead of my face. So, somebody, MIT, or somebody patented uh, some type of uh, silicon gel where the whole thing's clear. But they have uh, filter inserts in the bottom around the edges for where you're breathing in and out of. I think that's, it's got to be solved. You know, if we're doing this till next June, we've, we've got to solve the issue of being able to see somebody's face, whether you're a you know, uh, any kind of customer service, a, a hostess or anything. There's just so much expression. Um, right. But that, you just can't tell what people are, are feeling. Like some people, you know, you can look at somebody's face immediately and tell if they're happy, sad, in pain. You know, that's going to be big for pharmacies as well. So my, my statement for you there is I think we're going to get better at doing that. You know, when um, I would have loved to, you have all kinds of love, interesting things to do is to do, do some kind of study that shows how much better we're going to get at reading people's eyes as the expression mm -hmm. of their emotions um, based on the fact that we don't have anything else to go on. Uh, you know, kind of blind people get better with their sense of sound. I think we're going to get better. I can look at somebody's eyes now a lot of time and know whether or not they're smiling. Or maybe in significant pain, one or the other, but <laughs> pain's probably easier to pick out. Yeah. Yeah. So so it'd be interesting to see, you know, show somebody a bunch of different faces and 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 start seeing that I bet over the next year we're gonna get better in that. But but somebody, I think there's a huge, huge market to to come up with. Not the weird little deal where yeah, the odd. where the mouth has <laughs> yes. got a piece of plastic in I there know, and you weird. you see the mouth me, but but a true clear mask where the filters are on the outside and you you clearly can see somebody smile. The, and that you can engage. Um, we all read lips. The big, big discovery. We, we do that. We, we combine yeah. the ability to know what people are saying based on their, their mouth moving in addition to their, uh, you know, you know what they're yeah, saying. We've had some pharmacies like put their face like 
on their like chest somewhere mm-hmm. or something like that or hanging off um off a ah. off a smock yeah. or something so that they can you know just kind of like you know, I, I guess probably just makes you more human probably when you're not, ha- when you don't have a mask, yeah. when you have a mask on and I so saw, that they can still see your face and what you. Yeah. Know, I saw what hospitals like. doing that, especially in children's yeah, wards. The too. nurses were putting their, their picture on there because the, the full garb was scaring kids. Yeah. Oh, well, and I find, you know, I'm a kind of guy who, if I walk through the grocery store and I make eye contact with somebody, I'm going to smile and say, hi. You know, and I'm just that that's my deal. I'm from the South. That's what we do. We say hi. Right. We we greet people, you know, if you make eye contact. But I find myself with a mask on looking away, not huh. make because there's nothing to do to make eye contact. You know, it, and it, it, it's really interesting how that changes the dynamic, of how you feel and how you deal with people. And, and, and you can imagine how with pharmacy and especially independent pharmacy and how their modus is friendliness and motivation and other, just the challenges of the fact that my face is hidden, you know, and, and that's going to change how I react to people and it's going to change how they react to me. And I catch myself doing that subconsciously. Any, I mean, is that, am I, no, it? Me, it, me, no, you're not it. Like I, I, I don't, I feel like I don't quite pay as much attention to someone's face when they have that, when they have a mask on, because I'm really trying to just focus on what they're saying or, or, and so it'll make me just kind of like go into myself and just try to like, almost just hear you almost like you're listening to a podcast instead of watching something. Um, Well, I almost wonder if it's like a, it's a weird feedback loop. Normally when you like, when you're walking through a store and you say hi to somebody, you can tell if that person's going to be receptive by how they're looking at you. Mm. Cause you know, you can walk through and you see somebody angry and you're just go around so there's kind of a muting ability on both ends where you're maybe less likely to say hi and give them the the nod if you don't know how they're going to react. There's also the muffling of the ma- uh, the mask. So there's so much inflection that you can pick up like for what, you know, we do as account managers all day long. We're on the phone. We can pick up on some of that tone and and maybe some of those emotions through that. But whenever someone has a mask on, it just completely muffles it. So you're losing not only just from the expression visually, but sound as well. And one of the things that I catch myself doing, Jeff, is like I found myself trying to squint my eyes more whenever I am greeting someone so that they maybe can see that I'm smiling. <laughs> Blink twice uh, if you're smiling. <laughs> right. Blink yeah. once if you're not. <laughs> Smizing. <laughs> right. Or like, you know, like if I'm just saying hi where I normally wouldn't wave, I might just like give a quick wave or something, you know, I, so. I, yeah, I agree with you. I use hand gestures more now, yeah. when, when I, especially when I'm masked because I'm, I don't know, I feel like I'm not communicating 100% percent how I feel. So let's take the other side of that. So, so we just took the, um, I don't feel as, as outwardly friendly with a mask on. Let's go the other way. You, you know, uh, we all have uh, people out there we know who are internet bullies, right? If they're emailing they're they're very angry when they don't know you. And then when you talk to you, they're like, oh no, I'm fine. You know, kind of thing. The same way. I, I think it's a lot easier for people to be angry with each other when they have on mask, you know? And if you look at what's going on in our society today, it's almost like Dr. Evil, you know, unleashed the rage ray. And I think that has to have something to do with the mask and that people are dehumanized when, um, when they have a mask on 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 both sides of that. I mean, it's weird. I've seen more people with masks be friendly. Like they'll go out of their way to help. You know, like I've seen people get like shopping carts or help people carry bags. I, I haven't seen any, really the only people I've seen that have been extra ragey have been not wearing masks. Yeah. Those that are rebelling against it, they're just angry. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think though it's easier for them to be mad at the people who have masks on because they're dehumanized though? Could Maybe. Be. Yeah. yeah. Could be. And that's, you know, and in, in, in crisis, people respond differently. Some people respond in fear and anger. Some people respond and I'm going to be helpful to others. I think you're probably seeing that, that people are more helpful than they normally would be. And some people are less, are, are angrier than they normally would be. You're just kind of amplifying their, their, uh, emotion. Kind of like alcohol or something like that. Yeah. I don't think I was supposed to talk about alcohol this podcast. So. Probably not. <laughs> Sometimes it's soothing. Sometimes it's not. We'll just cut that out. <laughs> sometimes it releases the rage. Sometimes it releases the happiness. Right? It definitively decreases the social distancing. 
<laughs> we've learned that for sure yes, yes. yeah that's, that's the, why they had to shut those down yeah. yeah and it's interesting you know they got a lot of pushback in texas they shut down the bars yeah and uh you know of course the bars are suing because you didn't shut down the restaurants or, or anything like that but you know bars by uh, in their nature when you're sitting up at the bar you know mm. with everybody and what are you going to do you're going to drink and you're going to lower your social inhibitions and and that's going to lower your social distancing. And then, oh, big surprise. You know, I think they actually looked at the data here and said, hey, when we're tracing it back, a lot of people are getting it in bars. So we shut down the bars. Yeah, just the the partying and getting together. Yeah. So, congregating. you know, we see in, in Dallas, like when I go to restaurants now, they're vacant. You know, a couple of people here and there, but for the most part, nowhere near the kind of density that we'd seen before. How's that kind of sitting in Shreveport? Have you guys noticed? Uh... Yeah, so actually Will and I were just, and Will is here, my sound guy, production guy. Uh, we were talking about this before uh, we started and there's one restaurant in town that is just always, always packed and it is uh, Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> like they have not stopped the the crowd um but you know for the most part you're kind of seeing that people are still you know going out and eating but speaking for myself like my family we've maybe eaten out twice since all of this has kind of started opening back up yeah so we just i mean and that means going to a restaurant now getting takeout we're all about for sure <laughs> yeah I, i've made doordash an obscene amount of money in the last five months <laughs> right yeah. yeah well you know I seen the same thing you did in, in restaurants here, which is great because you can get in places you couldn't used to get into. And it's horrible. It's, it's horrible. Great. But it's bad for the economy. But good it's for good for you, bad it's, for the yeah, restaurant it's owner. It's bad for the world. And, right. Yeah. But uh, you drive much out of town. So I, I, I think um, I went with, with Mark uh, to visit a relative uh, about an hour out of town. And it wasn't, you know, it was oh, crowded. No. And he went another time and he said, yeah, I don't know how they don't all have COVID uh, down there. I don't get it. They're not doing any of that down there. Um, but yeah. It's interesting. We'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm sure we're, we're Americans. We'll make it through. We'll, we'll survive. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out. Yeah, we're just learning to adapt is basically what, what we're all doing. So what do we do? Let, let's play again. I think we talked last time a little bit about, um, into bit of pharmacy and COVID and, and, and going, what do they do? I, I know they, they got to be working on getting, if you don't have a vaccination program, they got to have a vaccination program. What else should they do? You know, we, we look at, uh, we look at a rest. If I had a restaurant today, I'd be getting my delivery game on and trying to do that out or my takeout without DoorDash, you know, really getting a really smooth, being able to come to my restaurant like you used to, but take away an amazing experience. Um, maybe that means, but you know, and if I'm a, a high end place that takeaway experience needs to be more, maybe that's a bud vase that goes along with, you know, maybe it's a couple of $10 wine glasses, you know, maybe that, what does that takeaway experience give me with that? What I would have paid more for to be here in the restaurant, you know, not somebody, you know, some Uber driver delivering some plastic bag to me. Right. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, how do you use your high end steakhouse compete? Right. Yeah. So if I was a high end steakhouse, I would be figuring out how do I how do I deliver a high end steakhouse feel if if you come and take away and take it back to your house. And what does that mean? Does it come with a tablecloth? You know, what what is that experience? So how do we as we translate that to independent pharmacy, right? And, and people who aren't going to come. How do I how how do I over the next year and more transform that extra high touch experience that I give to to serve people better who probably don't right. want to come in the pharmacy. One one pharmacy I saw that I thought was was brilliant. They 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 have like a really big women's health piece to their pharmacy and what they've did was to, you know, they used to capture a lot of uh, pre-COVID, a lot of just kind of walk in like, hey, look, this is what we think is best for you, whether you're pregnant or whatever, or, or what you're going through based on um, your prescriptions and then pl plus like the OTC front end stuff. And, and so what they did was create these kits. They created these little kits for like, you know, prenatal or whatever, right? And and that's what they're delivering or going through their drive through and, and kind of almost like a subscription model of, of that, like almost similar to like a, a hymns or something like that, um, that, that they're doing to supplement. Like a bark box. Yeah. Kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're, they're reaching out and getting still being able to try to get that same product movement through an easy, I don't have to think about kit instead right. of going, I, I need this, I need this, I need this. No. Hey, how about this package? You 
based on your disease state or whatever, you qualify for this. This is what you should get. So, and they've been successful doing that. Nice. That's interesting. Yeah. I, th- I think that's a great idea. You could do that for flu season. You could do that for, sure. you know, COVID, all, all of those. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's funny. It's so it's just like a translation of something that seems obvious, but probably isn't, you know, five or 10 years ago, it was novel to have like kind of a, a protocol for doctors after you had like glaucoma surgery or cataract surgery, right. you go to your pharmacy, you get your, you know, two drugs, plus here's your, your care kit. This is really a kind of, how do you make that a subscription type box where I get, how do we those... get our sniff stickers in there? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Every kit comes with some sniff stickers. I like that. If you can't smell That's this, genius. That's call genius. your doctor. I like that. It's like you don't need all these high end. See, we're um, still we're, we're back to my amazing we're, idea. We're back to this, right? <laughs> we're gonna have this the, the stickers in the in the boxes we delivered. It's it's finally time for a an application of scratch and stiff that's not kindergarten. Yeah. Hey, we could just have you could include a a, a, a fragrant marker in the kit, right? Just open the kit and. Smells like strawberry, doesn't smell like strawberry. And then you can draw with it. And then you can draw, right? Have a, have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about the what about the people we're delivering to? You know, how do you, you know, one of the interesting things, uh, you know, you, you look at experiences like Apple, right? And you open a new Apple product and how it's packaged. And, um, you know, a couple of those vendors like that really do a good job of, of packaging things. And we don't want something superficial, Right. Where the, you know, okay, we're just putting pretty packaging around something, but, but how do you up that delivery game to what the patient's getting where they feel like, uh, sorry, not, not just feel like where they're getting a, a much better experience that, that experience with the pharmacy. Yeah. Um, I, again, I'm going to draw on somebody else. I, I talked to, they, they did, this is a really cool program. Now it's not, it's not something you can do every day every time. But what they did is they powered through for a month and had a bunch of kids, write A bunch of like, hope you're doing well in isolation kind of messages and notes. And they gathered all of them up from their patients that they could. And, and they ran a program on it. Right. And then they stuffed those into those deliveries that they had to make for their elderly patients that have to completely isolate. And I thought that was just the yeah. coolest thing. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think about, you know, um, Marsha's grandmother's not going anywhere, just literally not go anywhere. Well, how amazing a note from a kid in a school and connecting those and just saying, Hey, I hope you're doing well. Neat. Anybody else heard of anything or. I mean, I've heard people spending a lot more time getting their delivery drivers. It, it's kind of making sure they're friendly and asking new questions because they have a whole lot of people now that aren't coming into the pharmacy. So, you know, really giving like kind of a checklist to their delivery driver of make sure you ask these questions so you're still getting the same experience you would get if you went into the store. Um, but, you know, that's going to be- depend heavily on how good your delivery driver is. But that's an area where independent pharmacies excelled historically. So I think they can upskill their their drivers a little bit and add a huge value to that. I've seen, and I, I think we've seen other pharmacies do this too, or equip them with equipment, right? Like, you know, bring an iPad and go FaceTime with the pharmacist because he needs to yeah. talk to you about X, Y, Z, right? And it's just, you know, hey, this is what you got to do. Just take an iPad with cellular service and we're going to, we're going to FaceTime you. And, and, and that's the, it. you know, that's the, um, COVID's going to change stuff. COVID's sped things up. Um, mm-hmm. COVID's going to make people think about getting things delivered that they didn't get think before. And if it works, they're going to keep doing it. And, um, and it, and it may works, may be a general, you know, it may work getting it from Amazon or it may work getting it from CVS's, but, but there's still opportunity. You know, what an independent pharmacist has is agility, right? I can do agility and personalization that a big company trying to do this with, with 8,000 locations and with, you know, 4 million people can't even begin to capture. And, and so figuring out that type of personalization and doing those things that make sense, getting that local school to write notes to local people who are, you can't, Amazon could never do that. And, right. and those would be the, the independent pharmacy is going to have to adjust to the new reality that some people are just aren't going to go to the pharmacy. And, you know, they're looking at, you know, there are people saying this isn't mass for a year. This is four or five years. This is, you know, we don't know how much, how long immunity is going to last. We don't know how good shots are going to be, you know? Well, and the first part of that is 
we can't guarantee that this is the last pandemic. Pandemic, yeah. Right? I mean, this is – we were – it's crazy to say that we were lucky, but we were lucky that COVID wasn't substantially worse. We were massively unprepared for this kind of stuff. So, you know, there will be another one or something similar. So having those good habits and capabilities of curbside and drive through and masking, it, it's the new way of life. And totally that's my kind of unfortunate doom and gloom. Yeah. Way to bring dun, the room down. Dun, dun. <laughs> So, Gina, what, what do you see for the next couple of years? Just just in general for you, what do you what do you see for your you and Pioneer X and independent pharmacy? Um, well, for myself, I see myself here for the long haul, obviously. Um, I love what I do. I love helping our pharmacies and, you know, seeing them through and helping them through these these times of um, trying times, if you will. Um, it's unfortunately, it's this isn't new to them. You know, it's like, there's always something that kind of they're struggling through. Um, but as far as long-term for independent pharmacy, um, you know, I think there's a lot of things that are coming about with COVID that, you know, are those conveniences that people are going to continue to want long after, um, in three, four years down the road, like the curbside, um, the delivery services. So I think a lot of that stuff is here to stay. Um, and I think that like you guys have talked about before the, the fast tracking of, you know, pharmacies being able to do that, um, um, the testing there in their setting. I mean, that's, that's huge for them. You know, they're, they're going to be able to relieve some of the stress that we're seeing on the healthcare system, um, by, providing those tests. So it's, um, it's, it's bittersweet, you know, it's good that we're finally kind of getting there and that's being pushed along, but it's sad that, you know, it took this for us to see that. Well, um, I guess kind of wrapping it up, I just want to thank you for trusting us 12 years ago. And I guess we should thank Marcia into talking to you for talking yeah. to you into to going on through it. Uh, you know, I, I think the you and people like you have, Right. Part of the, the, you know, when you look back at there's so much magic dust that made us become who we are and, and actually give independent pharmacy a, a chance at success. And, and you've been a huge part of that and in, enjoyed it and enjoyed having you here. And it's nice Thank getting to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And I, I was going to say, I didn't know if I should thank you guys or if I should be worried that I was all you guys had to pull in for guests. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, you're one of the first persons I thought of because I thought it'd be fun and it was. So, yeah, it's great. Thank you. All right. Appreciate Thanks, it. everybody. Thanks, Gina. Thanks, Gina. Bye, you guys. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Catalyst Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you subscribe and give a five star rating on iTunes to help us reach more amazing pharmacy people like you. To keep up with the latest independent pharmacy news and content, follow PioneerRx on your preferred social media platforms.